Welcome to E39 Source. This is Ryan Schultz and my 2000 BMW E39 M5. Today we're doing a video talking about the cluster. High OBC, low OBC, what is it for and how do we use it? This is going to be about the same process on an E53 X5 series, an E38 7 series, similar on an E46 3 series. Today we're focusing on the E39 5 series. There's low and there's high OBC. The high OBC looks like this. Your mileage, all of that is in these pixels and then you have a display below that you can then cycle through your time and your consumption and your, uh, your speed and the date. That is high OBC. Low OBC is a different process. I'm not covering that in this video. This video refers to E39 high OBC. In order to access the OBC, we need our key in position one or two. I'm using one, but you can also put it in two. You'll get the extra lights on the dash. OBC, by the way, stands for onboard computer. The first thing we're gonna do here is enter the onboard computer. There's a pusher here on the right. We're gonna press firmly and hold that for a couple of seconds and it's gonna come up and it's gonna say test number one. To cycle through the tests, we're going to push the pusher on the right. To execute a test, we will push the pusher on the left. Let's execute test number one. This tells us the last seven digits of our VIN number. The majority of the functions in the high OBC are locked down and require you to unlock the onboard computer using the code. The code is either the last five or the last six digits of your VIN number added together. Why it's sometimes the last five and sometimes the last six, I don't know. Try whatever one works. For me, it's the last five. So we'll take the nine, the five, the five, the four, and the zero and add them together to get 23. Now we'll use the right pusher to go all the way to test number 19. Test number 19 is the lock function. Execute test number 19 by pressing the left. Press the left again to enter the code of 23. So we've got to press that 23 times. The lock code is 23. And back to test number one, now unlocked. The test that everybody likes to show off is test number two. We'll go to number two. We'll execute number two. We will see the needles sweep their full range of motion. All the light bulbs are on. This would be very helpful in diagnosing any bad pixels or needles that uh, do not function as designed. It does one pass at uh, a slow rate of speed and then the second pass at a very high rate of speed. Again, the needle's sweeping their full range of motion. And that is test number two. I'm not gonna go through all of them. If you Google search E39 hidden test or high OBC um, test, you will be able to find a full list of what everything does. I'm just gonna show you a few that are useful. Test number two is fun to show your friends. A very useful test that I use fairly frequently is test number seven. I'll use the right pusher to navigate to test number seven and the left pusher to execute test number seven. This tells us our K temp, that's our coolant temperature, the temperature of the coolant, the water inside the engine keeping it cool. Thermostat in this car is supposed to open at 79 degrees Celsius. I drove this car a few hours ago, so it's still fairly warm at 70 degrees Celsius. If your car were overheating, it would rise steadily above 79, maybe up to 100 degrees. If your thermostat is stuck open and not functioning properly, your coolant may never even reach 70 degrees. This is much more accurate than looking at the needle. The E39 M5 does not have a buffered needle, so the difference of a degree will actually move the needle. The needle is not always exactly at 12 o'clock. If you have a 523, a 528, a 525, a 530, a 535, or a 540, that needle spends the majority of its life at exactly 12 o'clock. That is because it's buffered. It, it has a range that is um, 12 o'clock versus this car has one temperature that's at 12 o'clock. I'm not sure why that's the case. This one's just more accurate and easier to read. Some tests have a part B functionality. If we uh, decide to press the pusher again to further execute test number seven, we'll have this figure, N colon 0000 units per minute. This is actually engine RPM. So if the engine were running right now, it would tell us the RPM that the engine's running at, an idle of around, say, 600, and that'll fluctuate and update several times per second. So it's useful to look at. If we hit it again, we get A temp. I'm not sure what the A temp is. And we hit it again, and we're back to the temperature of the coolant inside the engine. Another fun test is number 13. We're gonna move up to 13, execute. It'll say gong, execute. and it actually sends all of the signals down to the uh, speaker in the driver's footwell and asks it to make all the noises that it possibly can. Again, that's test number 13. Test number 16 will be the oil temperature. 
Uh, the car is off. It's clearly not negative 48 degrees Celsius. Um, that seems to be the default value when the car is off. If I were to start the car, the sensor gets power and gives me a more accurate reading. Um, anyways, you can uh, see what all the tests are online. I'm not responsible for anything you do to damage your car, although I don't think there's a whole lot you can screw up in here. Uh, but having said that, don't execute a test that you don't know what it is or don't need the result that it can give you. Um, this is useful for testing your mass airflow sensors. It'll let you know the quantity of the air running through your mass airflow sensors at full throttle if you're trying to do that. It'll tell you your coolant and oil temperature. Uh, there's a test that tells you your battery voltage. I'm not sure. I think it's test number nine will give us battery voltage. So we should be sitting here with the lights on at probably 12 or 13. So 12.1, that's a little low probably. Uh, but you can see your battery voltage through here. So it's just useful for doing a little bit of diagnostics here. Um, if you go to start your car after this, and this seems to be an issue with this car, so I'm assuming it could happen to somebody else. So you go to start your car, let's say you, even you put it in position two, and all the lights come on in a second, uh, then they go off. Well, we've got a new light. What the hell is that little picture of two cars in the middle of the cluster? That light is actually for a feature that the United States didn't even get. I don't even know if the E39 got it in Europe. It was for some sort of a antiquated laser guided cruise control feature. That's right, they had that 16 years ago, leave it to the Germans. And it's indicating that it's on. Well, this car doesn't have that feature, has never had that feature, and will likely never have that feature. So why is that on? Well, when you do cluster test two, sometimes it comes up. So there is a reset for this system. If we press and hold the right pusher, it's not happy with me because my seatbelt's not on. So we put the seatbelt on, that goes away. Uh, test number 21 is a cluster reset. We'll navigate to test 21, execute test 21, execute the reset. Everything kind of goes back and it kind of rebooted at a different mileage. Was that not a 10? Oh, that's funny. I will have to check the uh, video clip on that. I think it came back at 209 and it should be 210. Let's try to key cycle here. It's telling me it's telling me that the tire control is inactive. It reset that memory as well. I'll just reset that next time I drive the car. Uh, it is a 209 for some reason now. That's weird, but um, that is how you reset that to get your lights to go off and back where they're supposed to go. And we can verify that it's starting the car and it is perfectly happy. So that is the high OBC menu on the E39 M5. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Please also understand the purpose of this video is high OBC E39s. If you have something completely unrelated, I won't know how to do it. So please don't waste your time asking me. Thanks guys for watching. Part 3 of the update and the uh, rebuild process on this M5 is in the works. Expected here within the next week to 10 days. Again, thank you and I'll talk to you in a future video. Take care.